kicky marks you are unbelievable but like you, you're just a, like an amazing adventurer have done some incredible things so guys welcome to the you can't handle the Amit podcast my name is nicholas ingle i'm the host of your show i'm an alcoholic i've been sober for 13 years and the whole point of these shows is to bring on thank you incredible amazing and I want to say ordinary people because just everyday people who have done some amazing and incredible things with their lives. Today's guest is an incredible athlete, uh, mountain climber, swimmer, ultra swimmer, cold water swimmer, all round lunatic who we love dearly. I'm very honored and humbled and grateful to have you on the show, Kiki. Welcome. How are you? Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here today. And I'm great. Thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> I am doing cool. Thank you very much. Very, very happy that you're here. So what I wanted to chat about is I mean, you've done some pretty amazing things. So climbing Kilimanjaro, uh, swimming to Robben Island. And then you did another small swim um, in England. How many yes. times? <laughs> So, <laughs> so I attempted uh, the English Channel in 2016. Um, mm. It's 33 and a half kilometers in a straight line from um, Dover to Calais. Um, I spent 19 and a half hours in the water and unfortunately didn't make it by about 400 meters. Um, I got pulled out of the water. But what? then I uh, fortunately went back in 2019 and uh, Spent 16 and a half hours doing the same swim and made it to the beach in France. Sure. That's unbelievable. How did that Thank feel? You. Uh, absolutely incredible. Um, you know, it was a dream and it came true. Um, and it was just, it was, you know, if you believe in yourself and you are able to accomplish something that you've wanted to do, it's just awesome. It's very, very privileged. Cool. Absolutely privileged to have done it. And I think the swim is an interesting thing because there, there are a lot of sports where, like with powerlifting that I do, it, it's you versus the bar. But the bars are constant. The weight is a constant. There, there are no variables in it. You either get the lift or you don't. Both with the climbing and with the swimming, it's not just about covering the distance. The big thing is the currents, the conditions. I mean, what was the difference between the two swims? Um, I think... The lesson that I learned most of all from this was that you can't beat nature. My first swim was on a day where the currents were crazy, um, strong currents, uh, abnormal currents. It was supposed to be a perfect day and turned out to be a terrible day. Whereas my second swim, I was blessed with a perfect day. The currents were minimal. The tide changes were minimal. Um, it was like swimming in a pool most of the way except towards the end. So a lot had to do with nature took a long time to, to, to accept that um, because I personally felt like I was a failure after the first swim. I know you don't want to hear that word, but um, so no, this is, it, took a long, it took a long time to realize that a lot of it had to do with nature and also that it just wasn't my day. What, what brought that realization on? I think, um, I have to be honest, I went to therapy. <laughs> Because um, I came back after my first swim and I was broken. I was broken because I know, I knew how much work I'd put in, the effort that I'd put in to do that swim, both mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in every respect. I, I was so prepared for that swim and I honestly believed that I could do it. There wasn't a doubt in my mind to think that I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, and... I had to just accept eventually that I had done everything that I possibly could, but it wasn't my day. It wasn't meant to be that day. And nature, nature affected that. Um, and so eventually I got to accept that, but it took a long time. It took a very long time to accept that. When you're in the water 19 hours into the swim and 400 meters away from the shore, if you weren't, and there are very strict rules that govern these swims in terms of safety, um, we talk about the English channel and if you were able to stay in the water, when we spoke just before we started recording, you said you would have. Absolutely. 100%. I had no intention of getting out. I begged and I pleaded with the channel swimming association monitor. I said to her, just let me carry on. I'm not tired. I can do this. I didn't care if I had to swim for another 24 hours. I knew in my mind that I could do that. 
and subsequently after having been pulled from the water and having spoken to both the Channel Swimming Association monitor and the boatman, I think they realised, I think that if they'd known who I was and had known me a bit better before the swim, maybe they would have given me a bit longer in the water. But I can't look at that now because it, it wasn't meant to be. But I think that I just have that ability to persevere. You know, I, I'm not a, I don't give up. So I think that if I was given the opportunity that day, I would have continued. But I may still have had the same result. So I'll never know. And, uh, you know, you would have finished, if you were given the opportunity, you would have finished, you had to be in the water for another 20 hours. I wouldn't have minded being in the water for another 20 hours, but I wouldn't have done it at any cost because mm. your safety comes first. So if, if there was anything that, you know, if I was becoming too cold or something was wrong with me, then I would definitely have got out because safety comes first. But if I was actually fine and I could just continue, then I definitely would have, yes. And just before we started recording, we spoke about, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the last decade or so of being a coach is seeing that that champion mindset where guys just you know the, the champions want to win they want to complete their task and that's it and sometimes that's a struggle for me to say to the guys if the training conditions aren't ideal if um, things aren't perfect like it's okay let's just carry on training and you know we'll do as much as we can and i've had it with one of my athletes now or a couple of them actually during lockdown where they've just stopped training because if they can't give it their all, if they can't be 100% committed, they're not interested in, in doing it. Um, is that something sort of that you found like it, it's got to be all in with the training and it's got to be all in with the win? I think that if you make a decision that you want to do something and you want to achieve it something, you have to give it your all. You have to put in the effort, you have to put in the hours, you have to put in the training, you have to have the mindset, you have to have the passion and the will and the desire. And um, you've got to have accountability. You've got to say, like, I'm giving up on this to do that. Um, but I wouldn't, would I say that I would do it at the cost of everything? No. But I think that I would try my hardest. I mean, I wanted this. I wanted this. And so I gave it my all. Um, so I... I I don't have that in me that says, if I'm not going to win, I'm not going to do it. I, I don't have that mindset. Okay. So the bottom line is I'm going to go out there and do my best and hopefully I achieve it. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's not possible and so I'm not going to try. I, I don't believe in that. I think we all have an innate p potential and ability and capability and we have to decide whether we want it or not. It's about wanting it. Um, and... You're not always going to win, but you're never going to lose. You're either going to win or you're going to learn. Absolutely. You grow from I, I things. love that. Yeah. You know, the fact of the matter is you, you, you learn from things. And so it's not always about winning. Yes, we all want to win and we all want to do well. And it definitely affects one's psyche, one's self-esteem, one's self-confidence. But I don't think that if I thought I can't do it, that I wouldn't try. I'm... I'm to me, it's getting up and trying. I think what makes me proud of myself more than anything is that I never gave up. The fact that I went back after having not made it the first time, I think that's where I'm most proud about myself is that I went back. And you did it. And I did it. <laughs> it unbelievable. And it's, um, we've chatted about this in the past before, and it's like I know a lot of people were – concerned about you wanting to go back so badly and do it and they were worried about your safety and these type of things what were what were the conversations sort of that you had with people that are telling you you've done it you've tried don't worry about it i think one of the hardest things when i came back was that everyone thought i was a champion and a hero um and they all believed which, that i'd done which it. you are by the way <laughs> You know, it was it was it was wonderful the support and the love and what I received from people. You know, you can't do these things alone. But I came back feeling like a failure, whereas everybody else was saying, "You've done it. You don't need to go back again." You know, you, you swam the distance. But as a, you know, I don't even think myself. The funny thing is, you know, you called me an athlete in the in the beginning, and I don't even see myself as an athlete. But every single one of us who takes a challenge wants to finish it. And to me, finishing the English Channel was standing on French soil. 
the fact that I didn't do it meant that I hadn't done it. And people found that very hard to understand. Um, and so it became my own personal journey that I actually had to block people out because everyone kept saying, you've done it, you don't need to go back again. Um, it did take a toll on, on a lot of things. I mean, uh, you know, your, your training hours, you know, your time away from family and friends and even work um, emotionally, physically, it, it takes its toll on you, but it's something I wanted to do. So my conversations with people were, you have to understand this is my journey. This is something I want to do. And I understand that you feel this way, but that's not how I feel. And I'll respect you for your journey, respect me for mine. Um, it was hard. I mean, my family was so supportive, but they were also worried. I mean, it's putting my body through grueling training, you know, and on the day itself, you just don't know what you're going to get. And, you know, there was always that fear of what happens if I go back and I don't make it again. Because it did affect me quite considerably the first time when I didn't make it. And so um, that, that concern was real. And I understand that concern and I love them for it. But I knew that I had to finish it. I think there's such an, a valuable lesson in that where sometimes even the advice of people when they care about you and it, that it comes from a good place, it, it's, I don't want to say it's not always, it's not, doesn't mean that it's in your best interest, but to a degree, it, you know, we know ourselves better than anyone knows us. We know what's going on in our heart, in our mind. And I think with you, like these challenges, every time you complete one, there's more self-belief, there's more self-worth. I mean, not only am I calling you an athlete, I'm calling you an extreme athlete or an <laughs> ultra-endurance athlete. Um, you know, I, I feel like a hero every morning when I have a cold water shower for 30 seconds. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I don't yeah. like cold showers either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. like cold water. Yeah, like you, you, you choose to swim to Robben Island, so, which is crazy. Yeah. Now, yeah, there's a, it's, a huge, it's a huge gift to be able to trust yourself, even when those who care about you, and we're not even talking about people who have opinions in general, but people who care about you are telling you no. Yes. You sure? Well, I think, you know, I'm sitting down, but you know me well. I mean, yeah. I don't look like a typical athlete. I know Mish had, the, you know, Mish spoke to you earlier about, you know, I've been overweight my entire life. <laughs> I'm a big girl, you know, and, but as in saying that, I'm 50 years old and I don't have a single medical condition. Um, I'm not on any medication or anything except that I'm overweight. Um, but it doesn't stop me from doing anything. But it does make people worry what happens if I'm pushing myself too much. And so I understand their concern because, you know, fat people or overweight people, have more risk of heart disease, diabetes, hypertension. And so they worry that I'm pushing myself to that and that can cause all those problems. So I get their concern, but I know myself and I know what I've done to try and get the best out of me in a safe way to achieve what I need to achieve. I was exceptionally overweight when I decided to do Kilimanjaro, I'm bigger than I am now. And, um, you know, the, when I decided to do it, I, you know, I opened the juice report and there was the ad for Kilimanjaro and it just resonated with me. I just knew that this is what I needed to do. And I told um, some people very close to me that I was going to do it. And they said, you can't do it. You're fat. You're overweight. You'll never get up there. You know, you have to be an athlete and you have to be fit to do this. And, you know, it hurt. But at the same time, I knew I could do it. And it, my weight has never stopped me from doing anything. I was always the biggest girl on the hockey field. <laughs> you know, I had upper strength. So I did javelin, discus, and shot put. You know, so I didn't play netball. But, I, you know, but I could run a, behind a ball on a hockey field. And it's never stopped me from doing anything. Um, and I think it's because I believe in myself. Um, and I believe that I can do this. And I think that's the mindset is that a lot of this is in your mind. I think if you have the right mindset, your body will follow whatever you choose to do. Well, that's, I mean, ultimately the mind is primary. The body can handle pretty much darn near anything. Um, you know, that, that's a great quote from Marcus Luttrell's book where he talks about going through BUDS, uh, Navy SEAL training. And he was taking strain and his commanding officer said to him, the body can take pretty much anything. The mind is always the weakest link. 
And it's such a limiting thing because, I mean, I'm, I'm 106 kilos and I'm five foot nine, five foot eight. So I'm morbidly obese according to the scales. And, but I'm, I'm not a runner, but I'm a fighter. That, that's what my body's good at. And you, your body is, is good at, you're a natural athlete. Um, I tell people this and it freaks them out, but you know, like, yeah, you are a natural athlete and I can prove that because you were doing, you've been doing sport your whole life and that's an athlete. I mean, and you, like the, I think this part of your journey started with Kilimanjaro. I mean, that's crazy. How, how was that? I mean, it's. It was, it was incredible. It was 18 women decided to climb Kilimanjaro around women's day to um, celebrate women and to start a women's empowerment academy at Ort. And also we walked for Ilana Claff, who was a woman who had cancer at the time and who wasn't able to walk with us. Um, we wanted to do, do it for her as well. It was an in incredible, incredible adventure. Um, I loved every minute of it. I loved the camaraderie of all the girls. I loved meeting all the porters. I just loved the climb. I loved being in nature. I loved that it... Uh, every day I had to use my body to get me there, um, but had the beauty of the mountain in front of me. We went through lush green areas and then sandy desert, um, and some at night was dark and all you could see were the stars. It, you felt like you were part of Hashem's world, and climbing to the top was just incredible. Um, yeah, it was, I honestly believed in myself for, you know, I suppose lots of times in my life I don't believe in myself, even though, you know, um, we should all the time, but you don't always. But climbing that mountain gave me such strength and such belief in myself and such built my confidence and self-esteem a lot because I knew how hard I had tried and how hard I'd worked and, and I achieved it. And it was huge. It was really huge. Um, even the porters the day I arrived said, there's no way you're going to make it. Um, and I did. I'm not here to compete against anybody else. I suppose what I'm doing is I'm doing it for myself. All these challenges are for myself. It's not about pressure from other people or people telling me you can or can't do something. It's really about what I want to do for myself. It, when, sure. I mean, that's, that's exactly the message that we're trying to get across uh, with the show. And it's, you know, our body is the most incredible tool for us to be able to build a quality life with. It's not something to be weighed and measured, um, to fit into a predetermined um, category of ideal or not ideal or, you know, so people can market and sell us products. It's a vehicle for us to use. My work that I do training addicts, we use hard physical training to help them develop self-belief on a much simpler level where, you know, they don't believe they can do a 30 second plank and we get them to do a minute plank and suddenly those switches come on and that self-belief starts to, to develop. And as yet you are using your body to have fun, to explore places. I mean, like the, the thing that, uh, like Kilimanjaro is an, in, and this is a conversation I, I would like to have. You know, it terrifies me one because I have a really bad fear of heights, but two, I feel there's something inside of me that says you have to see the glacier on top. You know, while it's still there. So it's you, beautiful. The, gla the glacier is beautiful. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I got to, I got to experience things and see things that I suppose I never thought I would in my life. Um, by all of these challenges you know it's opened up my life to new people new experiences i've seen things that i would never have seen in my life or experienced um and it's just been incredible i'm truly truly blessed it's awesome you know for me you were, you were saying you're overweight or you know you're not overweight that's your weight you know yeah. this is the body that you were born into you're you're strong you have both physical and emotional and spiritual strength that's your body if you had to give a message to someone listening to this that is he is heavy, they're a heavy person, and they don't believe, you know, in themselves, and they're fighting for an ideal um, that is unrealistic and not possible, wh what would you say to them in terms of using their body to to start building a life of quality and having fun? You have to believe that anything is possible. 
that you have the ability to do any, anything you want to. Your body is capable if you train it well, if you put in the effort and you believe in yourself. It doesn't matter what you look like. It really doesn't. Just go for it. But you've got to enjoy it. You've got to want to do it. You've got to have passion. And you've got to put in the work. But you can do it. Nothing needs to stop you. Nothing. And don't listen to other people because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Let so them do their thing. Just do your thing. Do what you want to do. If I had listened to everybody, I wouldn't have done half the things I've done in my life. And that's, you know, I, my, I would have wasted so many beautiful things. So it's that incredible, it's that voice inside of you that says, do it. Exactly. We have two voices inside of us. I can't deny that. Mm. We have that voice that says, just go and do absolutely everything. And then there's that voice that always says, ah, I don't think you can really do it. I don't think you're strong enough, you know. You know, and the self-doubt creeps in and all those. I can't say that I don't have those. I can tell you that every time I go and do a Robin Island swim and I'm on the boat, you can ask my boatman and my support team, Headley, and I, I'm on the boat and I'm saying, I can't do this. Why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this? You know, like, there's no ways I can do this. So, you know, so you always have that self, there's always that self, you know, questioning. You're like, can I really self-doubt? But, like, you just got to knock it out there and say, you know what? I can do this. And just go and try. That's the bottom line. Go and try. It's about the journey. It really is. And you just get so much out of it. So much out of it. I've had so much fun. I've had, I've, I've pushed my body to limits that I never thought possible. And I've loved it. I haven't, you know, it's not hard work when you're doing it and you're doing something that you love and you're passionate about. It's not hard work. It's fun. It's, you know, it's, and it's it, the train when you, when you have that attitude and that belief, so the training, training is not punishment. Exercise is not punishment for what you did or what you ate or what it, it, it's a vehicle to get you towards a goal. Absolutely. You know, People used to laugh at me. They think no. of mad. Sorry. No, no, you I go used on. To get up, I used to get up at three twenty in the morning to be in the pool at four so that I could do at least two to two and a half hours in the mornings before work. Summer and, and winter it. and, yeah. Summer and winter. So people say, you're crazy. But like, it wasn't crazy. This is what I wanted to do. And the only way I was knew that I could achieve it was if I put the work in. And I had to do it before work because my hours are unpredictable. So I knew I had to have done those, at least those two hours, two and a half hours every day in order to, to sustain my f my fitness so that I could do what I wanted to do. That's unbelievable. And I think getting up at that time of the day, because I do understand that well, um, is... I used to come to your gym at 4am yep. sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that determines the rest of your day. Like a, a commitment to wake up at that time of the morning sets your entire day, and it therefore sets your entire life. Because you know, uh, you're not going to watch that movie or whatever because you need to be in bed and you need yeah. to eat at a certain time. And it, it's an incredible thing that you do because you cannot. You, we were speaking about health earlier. You cannot do what you do without being optimal completely optimal every system working every everything from your nutrition to your rest to your recovery to your hydration um, stretching mobility all of these things so the the insanity i mean the extreme sport that you do not the insanity it is insane <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, absolutely <laughs> but you know what the, the insanity is the best way to live one's life what you do basically has put you in, in a position to be far healthier, far more optimal, as you said, than, than many of your, your, your friends or people that you know that, that are your age. You know, and I'm, I'm only one year behind you. And it's like, I, I feel 12, you know, 20 you know, in terms of energy levels and that. And it, yeah. it, it comes from that commitment. So it's, uh, it's very interesting also dealing with a lot of guys in recovery where I get guys that come to me after being in rehab and we train and they commit completely to that training. And then other people that were in recovery with them are going, Oh, you've cross addicted to the training. And it's not a cross addiction because with a purpose. So it's like those who don't understand that level of commitment will see what you do as insanity. 
But the beautiful thing and the thing that I love is everyone can understand that level of commitment when they find something that they want to do. That yeah, they want to do about, with it's about passion. It's about passion. If you're passionate about something, you'll give it your all. And exercise has wonderful positives. You know, it makes you feel good. You feel strong. You feel you just feel better. Your day is fantastic. I mean, I I I used to go and train and feel fantastic the rest of the day. You know, I mean, I used to tell people I'd been in the water for two hours before coming to work. They would say, "Aren't you exhausted?" But I wasn't. Yeah. You know, I was exhilar- I was exhilarated, and I was I, I felt fantastic. You know, so. I think exercise is a brilliant thing. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter whether you walk, whether you run, whether you cycle, and it doesn't matter how much you do of it. The bottom line is as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. But I think you have to keep moving. Moving is important. Yeah, it's number one. Speaking of that, so so what took you from from climbing Kilimanjaro to swimming? Because after that was Robben Island. Correct. So I've always loved swimming. I've been a swimmer my entire life. Um, I love the water. natural athlete. Na- yeah. you're an athlete <laughs> so uh yeah i loved I, I just loved the water spent hours at home in our pool luckily we had a pool and i used to do synchronized type dancing with the mm. music blaring my father loved the ocean and we used to go to durban once a year and we used to, i just remember him throwing me into the waves i absolutely loved the sea but he taught us to respect the sea and if you ever see a mark's family member in the water you will see them looking back because they're always looking where the beacons are because yeah. he said you had to swim in the beacons and you had to respect the sea. And when we finished Kili, everyone kept saying, so what's next, what's next, what next? And I thought to myself, I'd love to do a swimming challenge. And I actually phoned up. I'd heard about the Robin Island swim and I phoned up and I asked about it. But they told me that there's sharks. There's a risk of sharks. Mm. And I thought there's no ways I'm, I'm trying this. And a few weeks later, Robin Schmuckler from Ort phoned and said to me, we're going to do a Robin Island swim. And I said, you can't do it. There's sharks. And she said, she's met a guy by the name of Theodor Yach, who unfortunately mm. passed away. Yeah. And Theo came to speak to us in Johannesburg. And he said to us, we don't have to worry. There aren't sharks. It's the last thing you have to worry about. What you have to really worry about is the cold water. Mm. We need to learn how to acclimatize to cold water. And he's a, and he so was a cold I water expert. Mm. He was a cold water expert. He'd done 108 Robin Island crossings before he passed away. Incredible man. He mentored us. He gave us such great advice. And once I'd heard what he had to say, I was in. And that's how we got together. There were 22 of us, and we trained for 10 weeks at the Sydney Highlands North Pool. And we went and swam Robin Island, and it was an incredible, incredible swim. <laughs> That's so cool. Changed, changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. In in what because, way? Well, first of all, I'd never, you know, I'd swum in the sea, but I'd never gone past the breakers. So the first, the day before we did the swim, Theo actually took us to Clifton and he took us beyond the breakers. And I swam across from uh, Clifton 1 to Clifton yeah. 4. Yeah. yeah. But uh, behind the breakers, I'd never done that before. And it was just incredible. And then I got to swim Robin Island the next day. And like you, and you swim from the island, which I'd never been to. So it was incredible to see. Hmm. And then the whole way you're swimming is Table Mountain. And you're in this vast amount of water. And it's just absolutely incredible. You, you're completely, I don't know, it was it's just a surreal. It was just, it was life changing. And what happened was when I walked out onto the beach, Theo had organized for 18 other amateur sw- um, professional swimmers, people had already done Robin Island to swim with us. And when I walked out onto the beach, I met a woman by the name of Zani Miller. And I asked her why she was doing the swim. And she said, it's a training swim for the English Channel. And that was my light bulb moment because I suddenly thought if I can swim Robin Island and she can swim Robin Island and she's doing it to swim the channel, Maybe that dream that I'd had when I was a little girl about swimming the channel could become a reality. So it changed sure. and changed the wow. entire course of my life. Yeah. Amazing, hey? <laughs> we we become who we hang around. Absolutely. That's what's happened. You know, I opened a newspaper, saw the ad for Killy, walked onto a beach and met someone who was swimming the English Channel, went to interview someone for the for the a magazine i'd never written an article in my life and met milton breast who had just done the high swim in chile and okay. heard that he was going to swim the lowest swim the dead sea met him and suddenly i was swimming the dead sea so it is who you meet in your life and it also 
you know, you've got to realize that people come into your life for a reason. Absolutely. It's, you know, but the, the what you've chosen to do as your passion, the, the people that are in this are incredible people. And that's who you're surrounding yourself with. Um, you know, I was very, very fortunate to grow up and I have a good friend in Cape Town, Laurie Fialkov. And Laurie yeah, okay. at the time was the youngest person. Oddly enough, he was my first interview when we were 12 wow. years old. Yeah. And uh, I got into so That's much amazing. trouble because I recorded it on a tape over my bar mitzvah portion practice. Recorded. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like chatting to Laurie. So I think they, they, you, I've just had a realization that's sort of where my thing go, goes back to. And it's just, there are amazing guys. And that's the incredible thing about sport and using our body. Um, it is. You know, speaking as a, just someone who's been sober for 13 years, you don't find these people in a bar, you know, no. you don't find these people in a nightclub or, and I'm, I'm not so there are far healthier things to do with our lives. And yeah. th that's the beautiful thing about sport. And that's the gift of our body, which, which I, I'll try to get this message across that it's a tool for us to build a quality life with. I mean, just watching your face and your energy and you are talking about like, I think the Robin Island swim seemed like more, more beautiful because I mean, I know you love Cape Town. So it's like I mean, swimming and seeing Table Mountain is like, I want to do that now. <laughs> you got to, you've got to. You actually yeah. have to. Yeah. It's just, I, I keep wanting to take my family on the boat because I just would love them to be able to experience what I get to experience every time I do it. Um, yes. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. But on that note of, of saying about surrounding your, yourself with people who have similar mindsets, it's so vital. Because also, like I didn't know anything about ocean swimming. You know, I wanted to do it, but I knew nothing about it. And so you, you, you've got to surround yourself with people who are in the know. And there's no harm in asking people to teach you and to, you've got to the people you can learn from. You know, you have to have the right coaches. You have to have the right people in your life because – Whenever you take on any of these challenges, like I, you know, I didn't know anything, anything about the English Channel. You know, I knew where it was. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it, and so I found people who had swum it and spoke to them, and and I found the most incredible support team, and they got me through. I, you know, I couldn't have done it alone. There's no way you don't do any of these things alone. No, absolutely, it's like you, you become hang around who you want to become. So yeah. how how was the how was the shipping in the channel? <laughs> um, on the first swim, there were so many boats. It was, uh, and I got caught in the wake of them on a regular basis. Wow! Mm. It was quite frightening. By, you by boats, you mean how, by boats? You mean container like ships? Container ships, yeah, yeah and passenger you, ships. Like you know, they're, you know, they're not they're not small. They're not no, small. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and uh, I got caught in the wake of them quite a lot, and mm. um, I f kind of felt like they didn't care that I was there. Um, yes, I, it was. I was quite intimidated by it. On the second um, swim, they seemed to be less and they seemed to um, be further away from me. I don't know why, but so I didn't feel as intimidated. Um, my crew loved it, though, because one of the container ships had an airplane on it. Oh, like wow. A full-on Boeing yeah. 747 or whatever um, on, on it. So they enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, it's incredible to see the yachts go past, the planes go past, the ships go past. You know, you just... You just realize how fortunate you are to be in the place because not many people get to go there yep, <laughs> on the, in that way, in that way, I should say. Sure. That's unbelievable. So uh, I can't believe I'm going to do this. You know, I'm a strength athlete, right? I, I fight and I lift heavy stuff. I'm not injured. Okay. I'm going to commit to by December doing the Clifton cold water, the Somms. How about that? Perfect. Right. Okay. That's brilliant. Direction Absolutely after. brilliant. But you uh, have to yep. acclimatize. Yes. hundred percent. Well, uh, yep. Easy way to do it. Get into the bath and put yeah. ice blocks in the bath. In the bath, yeah. It's your, you know, it's it works. Like, yeah, I, I grew up in Cape Town and I was yeah. comfortable. The, you know, the people talk about weight loss. So, you know, I, when I was drinking, I was 50 kilos heavier than I am now. And um, I, I swam without an issue. When you get leaner, you feel the cold a lot more. Oh, so, absolutely. Which is why I've committed my life to cheesecake now. <laughs> All Nothing right, wrong. So, they always tell everyone to put on a bit of weight, even for the channel, because you yeah. can't be too thin because it gets too cold. Cold, even yeah, me, absolutely. I yeah. mean, I, I was heavy when I swam the channel, and I got hypothermia at the end. 
Sure. So, okay. you know, it doesn't matter what your weight really is. Ultimately, mm. you're going to be in that water for a long period of time. You're going to get affected. 100% sure. It's in- incredible. So for you, like, am I allowed to ask, is there anything next? Go what are you it. planning? Um, I can, whoa! Ooh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, Ladies and gentlemen, well, you heard the, it here first. On the sports front, yes. <laughs> since I'm a sportsman, I believe. An athlete. Um, hmm? Athlete. I would like to continue swimming, and there are still some wonderful swims to do in Cape Town. I'd like to do the the dog's leg, which is the three anchor bay to Robin Island. Okay, awesome. Um, I've been very fortunate to do three trip, three single, uh, three double Robin Island crossings. So okay. Sorry, that's what I was thinking of when I said around the island. Yeah, the, sorry. Done the du- and not a lot of people have done the doubles. No. Uh-uh. Yeah. Um, How many? Um, I don't. Um, um, I was the sixth woman to do the first double. Sure. And I've okay. subsequently done two more. And I think only one other woman has done another double. Okay. So I think probably less than 10 women. Um, hmm. I'm letting out the secret. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not many women, uh, no one's ever done a triple. Wow. Okay. A woman. A okay. woman. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and that, um, because that's my mother is it? going to kill, my mother is going to kill me. <laughs> but um, I'd like to do a triple Robin Island crossing if I can. Yeah. But it's I like, will. It's like mentioning <laughs> to Troy Mayer's dad that he's thinking about swimming up by Everest, you know, like Correct. that mile. Correct. And he's going, what? Correct. What are you talking about? <laughs> Correct. You know, they, they, our parents love us and I yes. understand their fear and I understand their worry. But um, my mom never wanted me to do the Dead Sea swim. Um, and I, I almost pulled out because of that. But she then finally gave me her blessing and it made it, you know, it made it okay to do. And it was amazing. You're, was you're, yeah, good. sure. And and that was, I mean, from speaking to you about that, the salt buildup on the side of the costume and taking yes. all the skin off your arms and now, yeah. and you're in very salty. That, yeah, I mean, that's serious, yeah. serious mental strength and focus. It had never been done before. So that was the fear, you know, the, the, the unknown of what could be happen and because of the high salt content what it could do to one's body the dehydration you know, your, kid, that, your yeah, kidneys yeah. your lungs your mm. heart dehydration so i you know mm. it was understandable to have that fear and to to be worried and um she supported me through everything um and so i needed her support in order to do it because um i would have felt I didn't want to be there if she didn't want me to be there, but she finally supported me and it was wonderful to do. Awesome. It was incredible. Can you tell us a little bit about that swim? So we did the Dead Sea swim in November 2016, uh, two months after I hadn't completed the English Channel. And the intention of the swim was to highlight the crisis of the Dead Sea because it's disappearing every year by about one to one and a half meters. And it was also important, it was also organized by Echo Peace Middle East, which was to bring people together to try and promote peace. Um, We were supposed to be 28 swimmers. We ended up being 25. Three of the Jordanians pulled out last minute. And our intention was to swim across the width of the Dead Sea from Jordan to En Gedi in Israel. It was a distance of 17 and a half kilometers. And we swam in pods of three or four swimmers to a boat. There hadn't been a boat on the Dead Sea for over 45 years. And you can't just launch a boat onto the Dead Sea. So they actually brought boats from Herzliya Harbour. And then they put them on cranes and they had to put them in the water by a crane. Okay. So even for the boatmen, it was an incredible day because they'd never been on the Dead Sea. Um, oh. We weren't allowed to touch Jordan, the land at Jordan. Um, they decided that about three hours before the swim. So they dropped us at about 100 metres off the coast of Jordan. Okay. And we swam to En Gedi. And uh, about 800 meters before the end, we all came together, the 25 of us, and we swam into En Gedi together. And it was just an incredible, incredible swim. Um, the salt was hard. It was a hard swim. We had to wear a special mask on mm-hmm. our face because to protect our eyes and not to ingest the water. And because it's so um, hyperdense. So, so you actually bre- you, you were breathing through a snorkel the whole time. Through a snorkel. So you had to keep li- your face in one yes. direction. Right. You couldn't move okay. from side to side. So a whole new swimming snorkel. style. 
uh, freestyle, but yeah. only your arms. You couldn't kick. No, sorry, you, it doesn't matter because okay. I don't kick. Okay. <laughs> anyway, no, but, yeah. your bum, your, actually your bum and your legs were out the water because the water is so dense. So oh, wow. all you're actually doing is swimming with your arms because if you actually kick, you flop over. Okay. And so we swam, and whenever we had to come in for a drink or something to eat, you'd have to take the mask off. They'd have to clean your hands with normal water. Then you'd eat something, then they'd clean your mask, clean your hands, and there was a whole process. Wow. Um, because the salt water could get into your eyes, even with the mask on, we all swam with a liter Coke bottle tied to our ankle with clear water, fresh water, mm -hmm. so that if you did get salt in your eye, you could stop yourself and you know rinse your right. eye out. But that experience of swimming into Angedi uh, was such a healing and an emotional time for me because I had felt, you know, like such a failure after the, the, the English Channel. And here I was completing another swim that I'd really wanted to do um, in a place that I love for an incredible cause. And, um, and I was able to do it. And it was just, uh, it was healing for me. Um, and it was a great swim. It was a hard swim, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> okay. But, um, because but it, I loved it, it took time to heal physically after that. I mean, you weren't you yeah. weren't able to swim. I wasn't able to swim for about three months um, okay. because I yeah the salt cut into my uh, skin down to my bone on the one side and to halfway to the bone on the other, so it had to heal. Uh, and I couldn't have surgery, so I had to heal from inside out. Um, so I wasn't able to swim for about three months. Um, yeah, just, I, just something. It was worth it way. anyway. It was worth it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Except the pictures on carte blanche because it looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's... Uh, sure, you know, it, this, this has been an incredible conversation for me because... Um, I had an idea of what I wanted to talk about was in terms of like that, you know, succeed at any cost. And it, it, what I've learned from you, it's, it's so much more than just that. It's about the, the incredible passion and joy and of being in that moment and being present of swimming and seeing Table Mountain. The physical, the pain, the, all of that you've not spoken about, you know, it's not, doesn't seem relevant to you. It's about the joy of the experience and the joy of being and doing. And it's, hit me, you, you hit me right on the nail. That's uh, sure. That's I'm really. I wanted to thank you for that because that's a gift for me. Um, that you. understanding and learning, and that's what I get to do all the time with us. So, are we allowed to talk about then your your uh, triple with Robin Island or not? Whatever. Do, do, do um, you need to tell? Do you need to tell your mom first? I'm saying. <laughs> No, it's okay. We can talk about it. No, she, I think she knows, you know, okay. I, the bottom line is uh, she'll support me. Uh, you know, she knows I'm a bit crazy and she knows I like to do things and there's a reason behind everything. And uh, why not? That's Absolutely. the truth. Why not? Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. You know? It's like, I love like chatting to you, like with Craig Norwich, you know, where Craig decided to start running to get into shape and, I think they became a comrades and then someone made a silly comment about, hey, let's swim Robin Island and boom. And it's, you know, that's what you guys have been doing. And it's an, yeah, in, he's an incredible athlete, incredible athlete. You know, it's like I see him in posting pictures of him swimming in his pool in the middle of winter and free, yeah. you know, so it's some amazing, amazing guys. And that's who you want to hang around and who you want to be around. So have you set sort of a time? Oh, sorry. Yep. No, it's okay. I think it's important to, to be around people who have a similar mindset and who want to do things. But I think it's also important to motivate people who feel that they can't. So many people are living with self-doubt and who believe that they can't do something for, for a number of reasons. You know, no one knows what someone's been through in their life or what they're being exposed to. But I think it's also important to go out there and recognize people and realize and try and help them realize their own potential because we all have it you just have to be aware of it and maybe listen to what people are saying often and you can pick up that they need a little bit of a push or a little right. bit of motivation or give them the self-confidence and give them the self-esteem build their self-esteem so it is vital to be around people who enjoy what you do and and, and motivate you 
And so I think it's important when you have that passion to try and pass it on to other people. And I think that you do that brilliantly because you've turned your life around, but you haven't sat still. You know, you keep keep changing, you, ta- you keep moving the mark and doing more and more and more, and you're changing people's lives. And you oh, need to take you. cognizance of that. Thank you. That means a lot, really. Um, it just, you know, for me, it's about understanding that I genuinely believe I got a second chance to fulfill a purpose. Um, I didn't know what that purpose was, but I, I'm finding that out every day. And I believe my, my, my understanding is that my purpose is to try and enable people to understand and to realize what they're capable of, that they're capable of more, to develop self-love, self-belief, self-worth, self-esteem, that what we've been through, the pain that we've been through, is actually our superpower. Because when we realize we survived that, we can survive anything. And the pain and the difficulty, and I think it goes to, to your journey as well. The pain that we've been through previously gives us the strength to go through the pain we're going through currently. And that Absolutely. pain gives us the strength to go through the next. It's like the Absolutely. Kilimanjaro gave you the strength to do Robin Island, to do the channel, and now to do a triple, which is so cool. And I'm so grateful I, I got the scoop here. Yay! <laughs> We're going to try. No. But I honestly believe that you're no. doing that successfully. You Thank really you. are doing that successfully. You, you're allowing people the opportunity to express themselves and to realize their potential. Hashem put us on this world it, to me, with all with a potential, and it's Absolutely. how we, you know, how what we do with that potential, our attitude, our passion, our self belief. We all have the capability to do whatever we want to do. And I think that's that's exactly what I'm wanting to do with this podcast because it's, and I use the I'll use it, ordinary people, everyday people. What I've that's realized, <laughs> is that everyone is extraordinary. Everyone is incredible. Everyone has fought an amazing battle or battles and is still fighting. And I I said in one of the previous shows that it's not about, you know, there are incredible podcasts out there like Tim Ferriss or Lewis Howell's School of Greatness or Joe Rogan, where they interview these very high top performers, you know, top of their craft. You are because you've done some world firsts and incredible things. But it's just ordinary people are extraordinary. And, and when people start to realize that, they can start to build extraordinary lives. Their lives don't have to be ordinary and mundane and suffering. Like I have a friend of mine that I was at school with, and she's you know, in a very difficult position at home. She's got some real, real challenges that she has to face every morning she wakes up. And she's got kids. But she's a superhero just getting through every day. And exactly. that's what people need to understand is like, and we, they need to be sort of applauded, lauded for that, for yeah. saying like, yeah, you are amazing. Exactly. And it's just, about by, keep, yeah. just keep moving. That's it. Moving. Got it. That's just it. We've got to keep moving. Move, move towards something. Find something that makes you want to move towards it. And move. And move. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, <laughs> it has been unbelievable having you on the show thank today. Sure. Thank you, you for inviting me here. I appreciate no, it. No, thank you. I, I, I'm very grateful that, that you came on and like, you know, like you're, you're a rock star and an athlete. So then, like you, you truly are. I, mean, I just realized that's it's what you do, you know, and you're a champion and you're a lighthouse to so many. Um, Thank you. you inspire so very many kind. people without even realizing it. Oh, I'm just it's telling you the kind. truth. And it's called Emet. There we go. So <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. It's a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. And just thank you for the opportunity to share my story. And uh, just everyone's just got to believe in themselves. Just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself until you believe in yourself. Mm. Huh? True. That's it. Very right. much. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, ciao. Bye. Ciao.